Hey, everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. I got my good friend Phil here. Boy, oh boy, do we have a great, great show for you today. Bitcoin immersive information that you don't see anywhere else, and you're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out, what you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Phil, the halving happened sometime late Friday. Saturday morning, the Bagel Boys were already asking me uh, what's up with Bitcoin. Uh, Monday morning, I think some of the answers are coming out. But this is incredible piece of information we have. And, and I love to, I'm just going to shut up and let you go through this stuff, guys. This is going to make you a fortune if you pay attention. Yeah, so we got a number of charts. We're just going to start running through them. But I just want to go into this saying that this halving is not quite like the others for a couple of reasons. So let's just dive into it. One thing that has been a concern with, you know, why would you invest in Bitcoin miners is, you know, if the mining rewards diminish over time, doesn't that screw up the revenue model? But one thing happened after them having was we saw some of the most expensive block rewards ever. Remember, we're down to 3.125 BTC per block mine, which happens every 10 minutes. That's the miners reward. So the concern is, you know, we, we've cut their revenue in half, right? But what's interesting is that when the having happened, the fees spiked and we we saw some of the most expensive blocks ever mined upwards of you know 40 BTC reward for a block, which that's something we haven't seen for many, many halvings. The reason for that is you're able to do almost like tokens on the Bitcoin blockchain with this new Rune protocol. And so people were rushing in because they wanted to have an inscription or you know basically like almost like an NFT, a little bit different, but like an NFT on that first uh, block of the new halving because you know that would be desirable as a collectible. So there was a rush for that. This has settled down somewhat. But it, it shows you that when the transaction volume over time grows on BTC, that it's not just going to be about the reward. It can easily, the transaction volume can easily replace the block reward. So as that having uh, reduces that reward down to almost nothing over time, then you're going to be supported by the transaction volume. And that's how these miners are going to perpetuate their business model. So where are we? Well, this is now the fourth halving, all right? So we're going into our fifth epoch. And I put it in, you know, this list, uh, River brought put this out. I kind of reformatted it so it's in a list here. But basically, you know, we're at the fourth halving, and this is the fourth of many halvings, which ends up halving all the way out to 2136. So we're already at 64K, and this is like, you know, call it the fourth inning of a 30-some-odd inning game or something like that. So very, very early still in this whole, you know, big, Bitcoin regime. And you can imagine, as we're going to show you guys in charts here, that the price of this, because of the way it's structured, because of the dwindling production rate, that this price is going to continue to climb and climb and climb. So, you know, here we are at the fourth having already 64K. This isn't even the cycle high. Uh, we think it can go much higher in this cycle. And you're going to see how high it can go in the subsequent cycle as well as we go through this. Why this having is really important and a big shift is because of what we call the stock to flow ratio. Now, stock to flow as a price model has been very controversial because price tends to swing wildly around what the model price would have you think that Bitcoin should be trading at. And we're going to get into that in the next slide. But in terms of stock to flow, that ratio is an important metric to understand in terms of scarcity. So for example, gold roughly has a stock to flow ratio of about 60 and it, it fluctuates, right? Because sometimes they're mining more gold or they find more gold uh, some years and some years less. So you, you don't quite ever know versus Bitcoin, which is programmed, you know exactly what the production rate is going to be. But that being said, gold historically has been around that median value of about 60. But now as we're going through the 2024 halving, the stock to flow ratio is going to jump up to about 120. All right. So now what does that mean? It's twice as scarce as 
gold. So if you're looking at it in terms of not really talking about the industrial use case, I'm talking about the store of value use case, which is really what matters in portfolios these days, right? People aren't putting in their portfolio because of, you know, industrial use applications. It's it's that store of value, right? Because you're looking for something to hedge against inflation. You want it to be finite to a degree. So this now becomes in terms of what we see in the world of finance, probably the most hardest asset that we have right now that's easily tradable, that's liquid, right? So this is a hugely important deal. And I think a lot of people don't appreciate that we've just jumped and made it twice as hard as gold, essentially. That's a really big deal going forward. And this is why I think you saw those guys like BlackRock. I think they they saw these models that, you know, how this was going to play out. And then they I think they finally got on board and said, okay, hey, this thing's not going anywhere. And if we embrace it, all of these attributes are going to just, you know, amplify the positives for this thing as an asset. So that takes us to the stock to flow model, which is highly controversial, because as you can see, price swings wildly around that line. Now, the interesting thing about this, the vertical lines that you see on the chart there, those are all the halvings. It, with the exception of the first halving, which no one was thinking about stock to flow back then anyway, because nobody really knew what this asset really could do or was or what it was going to do, is the fact that the first halving, we actually didn't, by the time we got to the first halving, we did not get to the stock to flow model price. Okay. However, since then, as adoption grew, every time we got to the next halving, we were over the stock to flow model price, every single one. And we've done it again. And it didn't look like that was going to be the case when we were trading at $15,000, because that meant in less than two years, we were going to have to race up and get up over, you know, 50 some odd thousand dollars. Well, we did it, you know, and so it's interesting because the next price step up here means basically what it's implying is that you're going to be trading at about a $470,000 price level going into the next halving, which would be approximately April of 2028. So I think we're going to swing wildly around this line. I think that we're probably going to get into situations where that's going to look extremely improbable, but do not underestimate as we get closer to that halving date, the power of that level and price. Okay, so that's why I think we do have like a recession ahead of us. And I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge for the price of Bitcoin. But ultimately, as you accelerate into the next halving, and remember, we have institutional demand now against half as much production that we've been seeing. So I think you can see where the demand, the reduction of supply on the exchanges gets reduced, that this can be a very, very bullish catalyst for price. And it seems to keep up with that model. Another model to look at, and this is more short shorter term. Okay, so that's kind of like what you would expect at the end of the next halving. This is more about where are we at in terms of this cycle, because I think we're going into an early cycle peak, and then we're going to pull back. And then we're going to get into an, uh, you know, a, a broader cycle run toward that having in 2028. So we're going to have a, a peak first, and then more of a traditional trough afterwards, but it's going to be a little different than how they've been playing out in the halvings, because usually the halvings are right smack dab in the middle of that trough, I think because of the macro conditions of all the money printing that Bitcoin is very sensitive to the ebb and flows of the macro in terms of dollar expansion, M2 expansion in the system, uh, that's going to contract as we get into a recession, let's say. So you have to kind of look at this as like, okay, well, we're going to surge up. Where are we going to go here in the next few months? So I think this power law regression analysis, I got this chart from APSK32 on Twitter. You can follow him. He, he puts these out. This one is an interesting chart. The actual lines there, the, the, the price graph part of that is a little, you're not looking at like, you know, obviously Bitcoin didn't trade up to $400,000. What that's, you have to kind of ignore that. What that is, is that's showing you the peaks in price in terms of the power law regression analysis. And what you want to focus on is on the left, there's a time axis. And what that time axis is, zero is like where you are now. If you go to one, that would mean that if we were trading at that one level, we would be trading at 135343 What that means is you're trading one year ahead of schedule for the power law model. What you've noticed is that when we get like two years and three years ahead of schedule in these previous cycles, it's been like a cycle killer, right? You're just, you're too far. At the same time, we've seen diminishing returns on the model as far as how far ahead of the model the cycles have been getting. And that makes sense. You do have diminishing returns on some of these in terms of, you know, return APR growth after having and things like that. That's to be expected because we're getting into bigger numbers now. But basically what this is implying that we would expect this cycle to get one to one and a half years ahead of the power law model, which would imply that we do see a price well over 100,000. This would imply maybe seeing something at 135,000. And I think that kind of falls in line with some of the the, 
you know, expectations that we've had, we've shown you guys. If you look at the 1.168 extension of the bear market, that actually takes us up to about 170, which you could still see that, right? Because that would take us up to, uh, somewhere between one and one and a half years in the future in terms of the power law model. So this makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that this move can happen extremely quickly. And, you know, this is also going to affect Bitcoin miners. They're going to be taken along for the ride too. If you look at Bitcoin miners, they're actually behaving extremely well against the market that's not doing too well in terms of the stocks. If you look at Bitcoin mining stocks, they're completely bucking the trend here. And they're performing right now, more recently, even better than Bitcoin. And I expect that to continue. In terms of the Bitcoin supply too, going into this having, look at the reduction there on the right. This is the amount of Bitcoins on the exchanges. So people are buying Bitcoin, taking it off exchanges and using custody outside of the exchanges. So again, we have a supply shock that we have to keep in mind can happen as well, which would throw all these models out the window. You would power law out the window. Stock to flow would be too conservative. We get into supply shock because there will be no liquidity on the sell side, right? This is where Bitcoin miners really, I think, you know, looking forward, if you're thinking they're too expensive now, well, if they're dictating the price of Bitcoin because everyone has to line up to buy Bitcoin to fulfill, say, ETF orders, I mean, you can do the math. You can get a supply squeeze and a price shock that will just, unlike anything we've ever seen in the world of commodities. The other thing I wanted to look at too here real quick as we wrap up, Bitcoin seasonality. So April basically bucked the trend here, right? But it is a halving year, so sometimes you're going to have those variances. However, I think I would agree that May, June, July is going to be very bullish and seasonally. That is pretty bullish for Bitcoin, even after halvings. And so I think we could see a really just extremely strong move going into August. So I'm looking for that to play out as well. In terms, and I'll wrap it up here with just kind of the short term stuff here. So Bitcoin chart, live chart here. Right now, Bitcoin's pushing up. We have uh, this 50 period moving average on the daily. I'm expecting now with us clearing these levels that we get a back test of that. And we'll have to see if that rejects or not uh, there. If it does, we potentially could see this thing rotate back down. This is our big support. This is like what I call the deep level, you know, Fib retracement zone. A lot of times you're gonna see Bitcoin do these extreme retracements and that's between 60, 685 and 62.350. And you could potentially see one more dribble down here to finish off the consolidation. And then I'm expecting us to basically rocket ship out of here into May, June, July. If we come and roll over, let's just say the S&P 500 doesn't like earnings this week. And we are kind of trading along with the S&P 500 right now. So they're, we're getting back into that. But if the markets get salty and roll over and we do lose this level, I actually think the final stop for any kind of pullback is going to be the 21 weekly EMA. Uh, which currently is at 55,000. And I think that's going to be, now maybe we poke through it real briefly, but I think generally this would be your big time support. Ethereum hit that. So Ethereum has been a lot weaker and you can see that in the ETH BTC chart, but Ethereum hit its uh, 21 weekly already and bounced off of that. Bitcoin just been a stronger beast. So we may not get that and, and maybe 60 is all we get. Ethereum might also get your run too, because the Hong Kong ETFs got approved for Ethereum too. We saw a notice for that today. So watch ETH, it might catch a bid in terms of ETH BTC, that also could be a good play. But I think generally crypto, Bob, is just going to boogie on out of here as we get through May. This is the gaps currently on the S and uh, the CME chart. And you got to watch these because these tend to fill. We almost filled the one today from the weekend, but they stopped short and they bolted higher. Very similar to what we saw on the S&P 500 futures. They almost closed the gap on the overnight futures and then they did it. So there are there is some unfinished business down here. If we do rotate back down to 64, it's not the end of the world. If that doesn't hold, then we probably probably see that 60. But right now we're trying to close this gap up currently at 67,460. That's about $100 more premium than spot. So you look for spot to get to about 67,300 or so and then consider that gap closed. From there, it's the bull's ball to fumble. They can continue to retrace this move up and maybe we are already making our way out of here. I don't know, but it's very critical that this doesn't reject because if you start if you start trading back under the four hour 55 EMA, that's in this range, that's not been good. You know, when, you, when you're when you pulsing on Bitcoin, which I expect our next move is gonna be like this, the, the 55 EMA doesn't get violated. You'll test it, but it doesn't get violated. When it takes a breather, you're gonna trade back and forth through it. Very simple way to look at price action but I think it's useful. So watching that level, if we lose that, then yeah, that opens up that rotation back down. So that's pretty much it for me, Bob. I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I think that kind of covers what I wanted to talk about uh, as we got through the fourth halving and what to expect going through 
the uh, having to the fifth having. Yeah, so I, I have three comments. So one is on the stock to flow with oh, as opposed to gold. Remember, Bitcoin gets more rare over time, whereas gold as price rises will get less rare because there is reserves in the ground that'll come out and there is reserves in vaults that'll come out as well. So just bear that in mind. And you're talking to a gold bug here. So uh, you, that's why Bitcoin is such a unique animal. The second thing is if, if you if you like Bitcoin, but you're afraid of trying to do everything in the, uh, you know, with those brokers and hard wallets and all that other kind of crazy stuff is that, you know, the, the Bitcoin miners are great, but there's also two other proxies that you could play too. So you have Coinbase seems to move with the price of Bitcoin and you have MicroStrategy that moves with the price of Bitcoin and they have yield max alternatives. So you don't have to be dropping big bucks to get in. Uh, I own both of those. They're doing great today, which brings me to my third point is that we told you guys on Friday that next week we're going to get a relief rally. I don't know if we did Friday or Saturday. Our podcast, that relief rally is in place. We put people in call trades this morning, already paid for a year's worth of their service with us, and we put them in the, into these Bitcoin uh, proxies. Phil had people get into Bitcoin miners last week. We had Wolf at 205. I think it was pushing 250 the last time I looked. These are huge moves and it's our algorithms and our insight that provides people with really good entries. We explained a little bit of our methodology last week. I encourage you to check those out and also check us out, tradelikeagenius.com and you get some specials running right now and I think you'll like what we do. We definitely will give you a good return on your investment. If any other reason is you're going to learn a whole lot more than you ever knew about trading and you're going to make some money to boot. Thank you, Phil. I'll see you guys later. Catch you guys tomorrow. Trade Genius.